Wild Sap of the Morning to you, My name is the Rental Man Buck. Welcome back to the Hay Farm series, where even though it is a crisp October morning, this afternoon it's going to be about 75 and completely muggy, so the flowers are still pink enough to water. The garages are actually pretty empty on this side. I have everything currently right now up on the west side of the property with the cattle farm, which we got to go feed cows. The white boss has been absolutely fantastic so far with loading and carrying bales around the farm. But as you guys also saw from the thumbnail, we are going to buy from my neighbors an old D21 Alice Chalmers. But before we can do any of that, we're going to run this load of hay bales into town to the animal market quick. Just put our tailgate up there. Don't know why that was sitting down. And the GMC has been doing pretty well so far. We've had a couple hiccups with the EFI Holly in this. But I haven't had too many problems so far. And I would say this was probably one of the better investments I've made. I did sell off the hay hauler trailer that this truck originally was hauling. It just caused a bit too many problems with the suspension where I couldn't physically tow it. Like the Dodge itself was towing the trailers just fine, but... We were having some really big issues with the trailer just dragging through the ground and the iron bowl did not do that. So now depending on how much we get for these round bales at market, we might just run directly over to my neighbors and go pick up the D21 as he wants about $20,000 for it. Whatever we get off of this, we can use to buy that. Our other newest addition to the farm has been a Rhino 4155 Batwing. I sold off my previous one that was on the back of the 6405, kind of a combo deal. I sold it to a rancher for about, I'd say, 16 grand in total. Like I said, I don't... I really just didn't care for the, the bogging down of that 6405. It was a really good tractor, it just it didn't seem like it had enough guts to do what I wanted to do. And the D21, if I need to, if there's any other tractors that are not available to help with the seeding, the disking, the farming aspect, I can still pull out that D21 and use it as accordingly. So not too bad of a trade-off if I do say so myself. There's one thing I really do love about this Iron Bull is this trailer has by far the best trailer brakes I've ever seen on a vehicle. So never do have to worry about having a brake problem with this as this thing just stops on a dime. Let's see what we can get for all these wonderful bales. Got about $8,500. I'll take that. Now to knock out as many birds with one stone as I can while we're driving, there is also some sad news regarding the ram that's sitting at the house. I put in an order because I'm trying to get some expenses down by the end of the year. We're selling off the ram because right down here at Cleaver Motors, ordered directly from Ford.com, we have a 2023 F450. That is my new baby right there. I can't wait to come and pick that thing up. That is going to be a great addition to the farm, even though I know a lot of Dodge guys are going to be like, well, what? Now you don't have the Dodge, so where's the Dodge going to go? Well, the Dodge is being sold. I can get about $44,000 out of it because I only have about 50,000 miles on it. And all I had to do was get a loan approved from the bank. So we're going to go pick up the Alice, spend the money, come back, sell the Dodge, and finally go up and start feeding cattle. So now that our order of operations is underway, let's get to it. Now, some of you might wonder why on earth I love this tractor so much. Well, I can tell you there's a very specific picture that I remember seeing as a kid when I was in like elementary in, on Google of this tractor. And ever since then, I've just fallen in love with it. So I'm going to run inside quick, get the payment situation figured out with Thomas. So I'm going to talk to Tommy and we'll get this situated on the trailer and back up to the farm. Now, if you guys have not already, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. As you do know, we are on the race to the 100,000 subscriber mark by the end of this year. I absolutely love coming to these series and giving you guys some really quality content, putting in the work and trying to give you guys a really good episode to really showcase what the diversity of what can be done on these farms. So now that we're rolling back in to the house, we're going to show you guys what this thing is going to be pulling. Kind of like we did in the Nebraska farm series, we were looking around on like machine repeat auction time. And once again, we found ourselves a Rhino 4155. This is a pretty beat up model to 2017, cost me about 18,000, I think it was 14,000 is what I got this thing for. 
pretty cheap, but it was also still kind of beat up. Made sure all of our hoses were in good condition, made sure there's no like spliced wires, the PTOs were all good, and everything seems to be fine. The fluids were a little low and the blades were pretty dull, but other than that, I pretty much have this thing set to go. We'll probably be mowing some ditches here uh, towards the end of the episode with the Alice especially, but we need to get this thing unloaded and we also need to go and feed cattle, so we'll make sure we get all of this taken care of, but first things first, let's go run and get our brand new pickup. Now don't get me wrong, the Dodge was definitely a very crucial part to this farm. The Cummins itself had a lot of low-end torque, and definitely provided a lot of useful skills while on its time at the farm. It just really came down to finances at the end of the year, but I was able to, kind of like your smartphone, you could get an upgrade and get something a little bit better, and it also pays for a little bit more so you're not paying as much in. Well, that's what this was all about. So I got a really great deal on this truck. I cleaned it up. I did my own oil change, did all my own fluids, filters, whatever it might be. I did it to, my, I did it to this truck in the shop beforehand. And the market value they said I was going to get was about 45, I think 46,000 is what I was going to be given by the end of this. So we're going to run inside, talk to the bank, get everything else situated. We'll see you guys here in a bit. Finally, once all the dust has settled and our money is just gone, here it is. Our brand new 2023 F450 King Ranch. I had to get about a $50,000 loan on top of this because the truck itself MSRP'd at $92,000. I would say a particular phrase, but I don't think YouTube monetization would like that, so <laughs> we're going to not be crude. But I think this will be a fantastic addition to the farm. I don't like the fact that I lost my manual, but sometimes change is good. Plus, I'm also a Ford guy, so definitely a good trade-off for me. I finally get to feel like I'm back home again. So now while heading back to the farm, I just got off the phone with Daryl. He's sitting at the cattle barn right now, getting two cows ready to go into the trimming crush, as I believe uh, there's one of them that might have a soul ulcer on its back right outside claw. Uh, we got to make sure we got to take care of the cows because they're going to be the ones that are providing us some money over the winter. We do have to sell a full tank of milk. So sorry, I'm actually kind of speeding right now. I really want to get 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 on this but he said he should be there it doesn't look like she's limping too bad but i am gonna get the mixer wagon out here so we can start mixing up some tmr the 44 the 4430 sitting inside shouldn't be too much to start up as it's about 55 out right now so hopefully it doesn't give us too much of a heck let's park this up right here and let's go make some food we're gonna load up this and then there was a silage bale on the opposite side of the old k10 uh, we'll just use that. We'll see how much we have to fill. Again, I'm not 100% sure of my ratios because I don't play this consistently enough to keep remembering uh, how much goes in for each ratio. So, kick this on. There we go. I just realized this thing doesn't have very much tilt going back, so I hope it's got enough arch on it to get over the top. Now it's about half of that bale gone. I will probably have to run back and grab some... Silage, which is going to be back at the main farm. Oh, yeah, by far. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go grab me a silage bale. And we'll see you guys here in just a second. Okay, there's 50% on that. And I think that might actually be filled. Ah, uh, yes, we are full. Okay. Well, we're missing the mineral feed, but what I'm going to do is I'll dump a little bit of this, run a few bags in, dump it on top, Yes, Daryl is currently working on the cows right now. I think he's uh, corralling them into the chutes. So that way he can check all their hooves. I know only one of them really has a problem on its back foot, but uh, I think he's going to be just doing a routine check, routine trim. As there's our crush right there. Yep, Daryl's getting them lined up. So let's dump just a hair bit of our mixed rations. There we go. So we we'll dump just that much. And I'm going to back in the Chevy so I can fill it with the mineral feed. There we go. And with that topped off, let's just scooch forward here and top off the cattle's feed. Check statistics. 
Oh, yeah, they're getting low on food, so definitely going to be filling that up. We're going to dump our milk tank, which is sitting in the back. I might hook up the Chevy and just get that filled up. But we'll take care of the food first. The food's going to be the most important. See, I love, I love the fact that it's sitting in the green, but I do want to top it off. So, and after the animals are taken care of, we can then start to go work on the uh, wheat field. So, just a lot of, we're basically multitasking. I'm trying to knock out as many birds with one stone as I can. And we are dumping. So, let's run back quick, grab the Chevy, and we'll start working on the water system. I don't think my Ford is sitting in the way, but... I've been wrong before, and there's a probably good chance that I'll be wrong again. Let's back this up right over to the door. And let's empty out the water. All again, staying productive. Let's move this out of the way. I don't think... Oh, nope, we did. So we did fill up the food, so that's great. They are still working through the hay bale, I believe, I had sitting in that ringer over there. It's just kind of like dirty around the outside because they've been tearing it apart. And I think, actually, let's help out Daryl with the uh, hoof trimming because I know, I think it's... <sighs> which cow was it? I think it was uh, Luann. Luann was the one that we had with the bad limbs, so... Daryl, are you still doing good over here with the cows? Yeah, I can help you could at least corral one of them in. Uh, yep. Okay, come on, Bessie. Come on. Okay, she's in. Uh, you still got it from here, or do you need me to do anything else? Nope, you got it? All right. Just check to make sure her claws are doing fine, and... Yeah, just make sure that's she's doing good, and we'll, get, we'll take care of things from here. Sorry, guys, it's getting kind of really hectic around here right now. Let's get some vetting in there. And this should be all the straw they need. There we go, let's check that. Perfect. Let's check on Daryl with Luann and see whether or not he found out if it was an ulcer, if it was a white line defect, or if we just had a little bit of a scare and the cow is just kind of overreacting. So Daryl, what did we end up finding out on this leg? Uh, inside claw. I, uh, that actually is digital dermatitis, so uh, let's use some iodine. Spray that up. We'll give it a nice solid wrap. Just make sure it's a loose one around the claw. And we'll get this girl back out there. Just did, did you do the bovi bond with the block? Okay. So just take care of that. Get her out of the chute. Check your other one. Just get it cleaned up. And she'll be out the gate. You'll be doing fine, Luann. We're going to get your milk sold. You're going to get nice and taken care of. We'll get you some painkillers. Such a good cow. Just going to sneak out this way. It's a little bit easier. Now, I've yet to actually fill up with milk on this. Okay, so it is right here. I said I didn't necessarily know where that was, but it looks like we're going to have a couple trips because if we're selling it, I don't have unit convert in, but if it's 19,000 and we got 2,100 per trailer, we're going to need to do about 10 trips. So just now that I know where the dairy is at, that's the only reason that icon's there. Let's just see how much we can sell this thing for. Maybe. Does it take it? I think it does. There we go. One trailer will earn me about 1500 bucks. Not bad. Could easily be better. But hey, we still got 10 trips to go. So by my calculations, 1500 bucks times 10, that's $15,000. So I'm going to go sell about four or five more trailers fulls. We'll leave the rest in there in case prices go up. Then we'll get on to working with our wheat ground. And the Oliver hasn't run here for a little bit, so I'm actually going to fire this up and let it sit for a little bit while I go and grab the Alice. That sound never gets old. All right, let's go get the Alice. First time rolling up the drive in the brand new Ford. Ah, it looks so pretty. Ramps are down, straps are off. Atta boy. I'm really lucky I didn't have to do any maintenance to this tractor. Tommy already took care of all of that before I ended up buying it. 
but I just love to have my Alice back. I love this tractor. I've always wanted to incorporate this thing somehow, and I think this was probably the best way to do it. For being as old as it is, this is definitely one of the quicker tractors that I do have now on the farm. I know it's definitely faster than the 6405. That thing was uh, kind of sluggish, to say the least. Now, I will need to go and buy some wheat seed, but that's not going to make or break our situation. Well, let's get the Oliver here, pop it in gear. Let's hook it up to that disc. This tractor is definitely working its way up the line in my heart as my third favorite tractor of all time. I know that might make some Oliver fans pretty happy, but I mean, I just love this thing. This 1755 is... It's, it's by far one of the biggest workhorses on the track, on this farm. But I'm gonna start making my way down to the field, which I still need to do uh, making the roadway that goes around the farm here. And just on the opposite side of that tree line, that is our field that we're looking for. There's just a nice little crossing in between here that we use uh, to go in between the trees. Like I said, I need to clean this stuff out. It's just, it's been a while since I've been here. Now we did spread lime on this earlier in the season. So we'll just be able to till that right into the dirt with the disc here. I'm gonna run back up, grab the Alice, and we'll let Daryl start on the disc. As we sit right now, Corey is currently running my other Alice with the uh, the seed, seed drill. Daryl's loading up on seed pallets. I'm currently going to run the Oliver back to the shed with the disc so we can get things swapped over. And I really want to see whether or not this Oliver can pull my new flex wing. But that job is technically going to be reserved for the Alice since that's what I pretty much bought the tractor for. So I guess the best way to put this is we'll see you guys when we kind of figure out what I'm going to do next. Now, while those guys are finishing that up down there, I actually wanted to grab one quick thing out of the toolbox, and that is a thank you to the latest addition to the Rental Man channel of company supporters. So as you guys saw in the Missouri Iron Gauntlet, I actually was wearing a line of apparel. That apparel line being the company Ag Swag. Now, I've been in touch with some of the higher-up guys over at that glorious company, which their brand is built on the rural lifestyle. So if you guys ever heard of Ag Swag, they produce a lot of great merchandise that pertains to what it states, the rural lifestyle. Whether you're a trucker, a farmer, a blue-collar, however you might be. If you like mud on your boots, a cold beer at night, and cornfields right next to you left and right, this apparel line is meant for you. Now, I've actually also been working on some Ag Swag apparel that you guys can technically get yourself, but I have like a, a few different variants of stuff. So like they have the Ag Swag Cow. This works better for darker designs. And then uh, and then their other one is the dark variant, which this, if you get the real version, it's supposed to be a military green, like a veteran's dedicational shirt. There's a handful of just of other really cool designs that they have on this stuff I'm working on. I also have some hats that I've been working with. I have some Andy Clean stuff that I've been working with Andy on. I got my Prairie State stuff, which I'm still kind of actually tweaking with because I didn't figure out the wardrobe stuff before now. Uh, I got some Nebraska caps, but Ag Swag themselves, they really wanted to kind of get involved with this once I was starting to talk to them about it. So, but I'm gonna try and get this stuff to you guys at least PC. 
being an actual company and giants being giants, there's probably not a way to get this stuff to console, but hey, anything's possible. I don't know. But I'm going to work on this pack so you guys can definitely check that out. Also, be sure to check out Ag Swag in the description down below. But I think now the boys are done with the field, so let's finish up by getting that Alice hooked up to the Rhino. Yep, just like clockwork. There they are. So they're going to finish up some stuff over at the cattle barn. I think where I'm going to start cutting primarily is around the cattle farm. Since a lot of that grass is pretty long and shaggy, I know I could get back in on this stuff in the tree lines, but if I do, I kind of want to cut the stuff right close to the ditch with my finish mower. But we'll see how the end result of this works. Turn that on. Let's drop down into low four. Drop it and let's go. So I'm pretty much just going to clean up around the pasture just so it doesn't look as shaggy. It's a little bit easier to get around. And dang, is it dusty out here. I didn't think this was this bad, but I mean, I've been wrong. Just get everything nice and dazzled up. It doesn't need to look like we're going to go see the Sistine Chapel, but you know, it doesn't hurt to make your property look at least halfway decent. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you all so much for coming to check this one out. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. Also, be sure to check out the rest of the Boomstick Club for all the up-to-date content from me and the gang. You guys already know who is in it. But that'll do it for me, guys. We'll see you all in the next one. This is the Rental Man out. Peace.